Star Trek reveals Data's kryptonite, turning his massive intelligence into a weakness. Data is one of the most intelligent beings in the Star Trek universe, but his kryptonite has finally been revealed as this same intellect is turned into a weakness. In Star Trek Annual 2024, Data, who has been absent from the line since the Tsenkethi Crisis, returns, seeking his brother Lore. Missing since the end of Day of Blood, Lore is up to no good, exploiting his brother's one weakness. Star Trek Annual 2024 was written by Jackson Lansing and Colin Kelly and drawn by Rachel Stott. Data is searching the galaxy for his brother Lore, and teaming with Chief Miles O'Brien and Geordi LaForge, tracks Lore to a space station orbiting a black hole. There, the trio find not only Korath, the renegade Klingon scientist in Lore's employ, but Lore himself. Lore tells his brother that he has walked right into Lore's trap. Lore, knowing Data could not resist a mystery, created one as a means of luring his brother to the station. Data is a huge mystery buff in the Star Trek universe lore is correct. Data cannot resist a mystery. After being turned on to the adventures of Sherlock Holmes, Data became fascinated with the character, often embarking on holodeck adventures based on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's writings. In the second season Star Trek, the Next Generation episode Elementary Dear Data, his love of mysteries backfired leading to the creation of the very first sentient hologram in the franchise's history. Outside the Holmes-themed episodes, Data's inquisitive nature has become a hallmark of his character. Unfortunately, Lore has now weaponized this love of mysteries, turning it into a weakness, one he can then exploit. Lore left clues around Farius Prime and the Orion homeworld, all designed to bait Data and lure him into his clutches. Lore is planning to become a god, and he wanted his brother by his side to witness his greatest triumph. Lore knew he needed a way to get Data there. Lore is an astute observer, and knowing about his brother's penchant for mysteries creates one Data cannot resist. Data's love of mysteries has been turned against him. Data's love of mysteries has driven some of Star Trek's finest episodes, but here it has put the entire galaxy into danger. Now that he has taken Data prisoner, Lore has everything he needs to recreate reality in his own image. Furthermore, Data's love of mysteries has put both Geordi and O'Brien in danger. When it was portrayed on Star Trek The Next Generation, Data's affection for mysteries was wholesome, but here it has been transformed into his kryptonite as Lore exploits it to destroy the entire Star Trek universe. Star Trek reveals a link between Voyager's Tom Paris and his TNG doppelganger Star Trek Voyager's LT. Tom Paris, Robert Duncan McNeil, finally has a confirmed link to his Star Trek the next generation doppelganger, Nick Locarno. Robert Duncan McNeil made his Star Trek debut as Nick Locarno in TNG Season 5, Episode 19, The First Duty. A member of Starfleet Academy's elite Nova Squadron, Locarno was involved in a scandalous cover up that resulted in his expulsion. While Locarno was initially considered as the helmsman for the USS Voyager, the show's producers instead created a more redeemable character in Tom Paris. Dom Paris had also made mistakes, but unlike disgraced cadet Nick Locarno, he strove to redeem himself throughout Star Trek Voyager's seven seasons. Paris's work paid off, and he returned to the Alpha Quadrant a hero when Voyager ended. Star Trek Lower Decks emphasized the differences between Tom Paris and his doppelganger by bringing back the Voyager helmsman as a hero and Nova Squadron's disgraced leader as a villain. Now, Star Trek Prodigy Season 2 reveals that Tom Paris and Nick Locarno have something else in common besides their looks. Star Trek Voyager's Tom Paris has a Nova Squadron link like TNG's Nick Locarno. It was never established whether Tom Paris was a Nova Squadron member at Starfleet Academy, but his older self now has a link with the Elite Squad. In Star Trek Prodigy Season 2 Episode 15, Ascension Part I, Nova Squadron are deployed to aid the USS Voyager 8 and USS Protostar in their fight against Oshchencha, Jamila Jamil. As the pilots race to their shuttles, Magil, Michaela Dietz, points out that they're marked two Nova Flyers, designed by Tom Paris. This establishes Paris's link to Nova Squadron as a designer, which further solidifies his similarities to Nick Locarno. We know from Star Trek Prodigy Season 2 that Paris isn't serving aboard the USS Voyager, which makes sense, as he and LT, Alana Torres, Roxon Dawson, have a daughter to raise. Prodigy Season 1 revealed that Balana had a role in leading the construction of the USS Dauntless, while Tom is now designing flyers for Starfleet Academy.
This means that Tom and Bill Anna are likely on Earth, rather than in deep space. Bomb Paris may even be a Nova Squadron instructor, since he's one of Starfleet's best pilots. Given his past, he'd be great at rooting out any potential Nick Locarnos. Star Trek Prodigy redeemed Nova Squadron after Nick Locarno. Star Trek Prodigy redeemed Nova Squadron after Nick Locarno. Star Trek Prodigy Season 2 takes place three years after the appearance of Nova Fleet and the death of Nick Locarno. While Lieutenant Beckett Mariner, Tawny Newsom, and the Cerritos crew were able to prevent Locarno from enacting his plans, his resurgence may have brought further shame to Nova Squadron. Thankfully, Prodigy's Nova Squadron have shrugged off Nick Locarno's scandals to become the very best of Starfeet. In fact, Magil and her teammates' desire to move past the stigma surrounding Nova Squadron could explain why they were so intent on finding out why Dalrell, Brett Gray, and the Prodigy crew were sneaking around. Star Trek Prodigy also continues the redemption of Wesley Crusher, Will Wheaton, for his role in the Josh Albert cover-up. Now that he's a traveler, Wesley has the huge responsibility of maintaining the fragile balance of the entire Star Trek multiverse. It's a far cry from the young and reckless Wesley Crusher, who followed Nick Locarno's lead in the Nova Squadron cover-up. With the death of Nick Locarno and the redemption of Wesley Crusher and Star Trek Voyager's Tom Paris, Nova Squadron once again represents some of the very best officers that Starfleet has to offer. Star Trek's Dr. Bashir is an augment thanks to ADS-9 writer's wife Celeste Chan Wolf, wife of Star Trek, Deep Space Nine writer Robert Hewitt Wolf, was inadvertently responsible for the revelation that Dr. Julian Bashir, Alexander Siddig, was an augment. DS9 Season 5, Episode 16, Dr. Bashir, I presume, contained the game-changing twist that Bashir had undergone illegal genetic augmentation surgery when he was a child. The Federation's ban on genetic augmentation was implemented to prevent the birth of another tyrant like Khan Noonien Singh, Ricardo Montalban. However, Bashir's augmentations proved that not every genetic Superman was a tyrant in waiting. Star Trek Deep Space Nine's revelations about Dr. Bashir further developed the character and opened up new avenues for storytelling. Some of the best Dr. Bashir episodes of DS9 and later seasons revolved around him trying to improve the lives of other augments while turning down the advances of Section 31, who wanted to weaponize him against the Dominion. One of the most interesting elements of Bashir's genetic augmentation was the lengths that he went to in order to hide them. This allowed Robert Hewitt Wolf to address a DS9 plot hole that always irritated his wife Celeste Chan Wolf. DS9's yes, Dr. Bashir is an augment thanks to Robert Hewitt Wolf's wife in Star Trek Deep Space Nine Season 1, Episode 7, Q Less. Written by Robert Hewitt Wolf, Bashir reveals that he made a crucial error in his final oral exam at Starfeet Medical Academy. Julian's error was that he mistook a pre-ganglionic fiber for a post-ganglionic nerve, which resulted in him only being the second best student in his class. Celeste Chan Wolf, a psychotherapist, pointed out to her husband that pre-ganglionic fibers and post-ganglionic nerves are two completely different things. When he came to write DS9 Season 3, Episode 19, Distant Voices, Wolf wrote an apparent explanation for the inaccuracy. Years later, when it was decided that Dr. Bashir was genetically enhanced, Julian's deliberate mistake was given more meaning. Rather than being a mistake, it was, as Altavar suggested, a deliberate choice to hide his identity as a super-powered augment. Star Trek Deep Space Nine Season 5, Episode 16, Dr. Bashir, I presume, was written by Ronald D. Moore, who wanted to make Julian an augment to explain the inconsistencies in Dr. Bashir's character. As the first person to point out an inconsistency in Dr. Bashir's character, Celeste Chan Wolf can take a small portion of the credit for the eventual revelation.